dear participants, welcome to the WE Team Leadership Conference held for the very first time in Malaysia. For the next for the next three days, we will go through the basic training program of WE Team International. And it gives me great pleasure to present to you the trainer, the key speaker for this conference. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm proud to present to you Mr. Jose S. Fabregas. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Good evening. I'm glad you're all here. I'm glad you could make it. This is a very exciting time. Thank you. I'd like to start with our first module uh, in the basic training program. And uh, before I, I give the title, I would just like to say that there are this industry has been alive for a very, very long time, okay? Since 1959, when a, when a company in America started it, who, to this day, I look up to the founders and the owners of this company, and they started this wonderful industry. Uh, however, there have been many, many people who have failed in this industry. There are many people that have succeeded and made lots of money. And I'm sure you've heard of these people. I'm sure you've heard them in, in uh, uh, you've read of them in magazines, okay? You've heard their tapes. You've heard people talking about them. You've read about them in all the industry magazines. But, okay, let's, let's be uh, real tonight, okay? And that's one thing I'm going to have to, to ask, okay? Can I speak the truth tonight? Yes. Okay, many, many times, especially in this module, I'm going to be talking about things and then subjects that strike, uh, <laughs> strike straight into your activities and your heart. Not really. Uh, I don't have that much time with you. We only have until Saturday. You know, I wish we could be here for a week. There's so many activities. Uh, but again, because of so little time, I have, I'm going to have to ask your permission to be able to speak the truth to you people. Yes. Is that okay with you guys? Yes. Is anybody going to be offended? No. We're here to learn, right? Yes. And part of learning is identifying a problem. Okay, so I'm going to be speaking the truth, most especially in this module. Okay, getting back to what I was saying, yes, there have been many successes, but there have also been many, many failures in this business. Okay, let's be real. Let's not, let's not hide uh, issues that are real to a lot of people. Many, many people have come into this industry with their hopes and their dreams up here and have never really gotten their businesses off the ground, their organizations off the ground. I'd like to examine why. Okay, I'd like to examine why these people didn't succeed. I've been looking at this, uh, these examples for a long time. Uh, early in my career in this business, I also lived up to these examples that I'm going to be showing you. Uh, but uh, fortunately, I had a good uh, teacher, a good leader who, who taught me the right things. Okay, so I'd like to go over them. And uh, I basically call this the eight reasons why people fail uh, in this industry, okay? Eight of what, what I feel and the rest of us in the V team feel uh, are the main reasons why people fail in the industry. There probably are more, okay? But I'm sure if you examine them, sooner or later you'll find that they're tied up to these eight. Now all of these are important. I didn't really put them down in order of importance, okay? Admittedly, there's maybe one or two that you may find more important than somebody else uh, seated beside you. But nevertheless, all of these points are important. So let's go first to number one. One of the main reasons why people fail in this industry is they don't take the business seriously. They think that this is a small time business. They think that this is something that, you know, oh, housewives do or people, uh, people who have nothing else to do with their lives do. Okay, how many, how many were in that boat before? Okay, that's how I used to look at this. And, oh, yeah, yeah, this, yeah, you can do it. You got nothing better else to do. Okay, this was way, way back when I was much, much younger. Okay, uh, they think that this business is a small-time concern. Okay, now I had been in traditional business before I got involved uh, in this wonderful industry. And uh, 
my financial auditor uh, in, my, in my business was a, uh, was a covenant brother of mine, and he was also my financial advisor. And uh, as you will see over the next uh, two or three days, I'm a bit... Uh, <laughs> I'm a bit lively at times and aggressive, and I like to, you know, I, I like to, to be at the forefront, I like to do things. So I was always looking at new businesses to invest in. And I remember, as financial advisor, you know, we, we made a deal that before I do anything, I would give him a call. Okay, so I remember calling him many, many times saying, Hey, Mon, I have a fantastic business uh, that I can get into. I have a very good business that we can get into. And I still remember his voice up to this day over the phone telling me, Joe, all businesses are good, okay, as long as you manage them properly. All businesses can be profitable as long as you manage it properly. Okay, you can sell peanuts, literally, you can sell peanuts, okay, and still make, uh, <laughs> still make a lot of money. I mean, evidence to the fact is that when you go into a 7-Eleven store, right, are there people, <laughs> are there uh, bags of peanuts that you can buy? I mean, do you think these people sell these peanuts for a loss? <laughs> They're making money doing it. Okay, so yes, literally, even selling peanuts. I know, uh, I know somebody uh, in the Philippines, I know of somebody in the Philippines who, who, who owns uh, a sari-sari store. Sari-sari store uh, in Malaysia would be, uh, I think the Indonesians understand it. You know, a store where you can buy everything. In, in, if you go to the Philippines, almost on every street corner, Okay, you will see these little stores that have a hodgepodge of goods, you know, all dumped together for, you know, for the, you know, for the people to come in and, and buy. And, uh, and uh, he doesn't think this is a small-time business. Okay, his name is Henry C. Okay, he owns uh, the Mega Mall chain, the Schumart Mega Mall chain. And uh, there's about, I don't know, 14, 15, 16 all over the Philippines. Okay, I heard, that, but he owns a Sari Sari store. But he just took the business very, very seriously. Okay, so there is no such thing as a small-time business. Only a small-time businessman. Okay, any business can be a big business as long as you manage it properly and take it seriously. Most people don't treat the Gold Quest opportunity as a business. Okay, and uh, this is sad because many, many times I know people that have lost out simply because they didn't take the business seriously. Okay. Uh, now why? Let's, let's think. Why, why do people not take this business seriously? People think that to qualify as a business, you need large capital. Isn't that what we think? Right? When you think of, I'm going to set up my own business, okay? Oh, you're thinking of 100,000 ringgit, you know, or I don't know, 20, 30,000 US dollars to set up either a food stall or a bakery or a dress shop or a video shop. That's what most people recognize and accept as a quote-unquote business, correct? Okay, that's the way we were taught in school. That's the way we were brought up. So when somebody comes to us and shows us an opportunity where we can earn business type of income, okay, which you can in, in GoldQuest and many, many other companies, because the capital requirements are so small, okay, people don't recognize it as a business. They don't treat it as a business. Many, many times, people don't treat this opportunity with respect simply because the only thing that you have to do to get started in the business is make the purchase of a coin or a coin set. But now, does that seem like an act of doing business? No, it's like going into the store and buying a TV set or going and buying a pair of shoes or, or, or a necktie. It's the same thing, you just buy a gold coin. However, because of the, the opportunity and the marketing plan, you're also able to go out and through the referral program, okay, earn, uh, earn a very decent income. And believe me, some of the incomes are decent. Yes or no? Many people participating in this business, okay, have the frame of mind that goes something like this. I'll try it. If the business does well, I'll take it seriously. How, how many have ever heard that before? Huh? From your friends, from your, okay, okay, I'll try it. If it explodes, right, then I'll take it seriously. We used to think that way before. Okay, great, that's fantastic. No, not because you used to think that way, but because you don't think that way anymore. Okay? Now, having that frame of mind, it's like a businessman, okay, saying, I'll invest $10,000 in a bakery or a dress shop, whatever. 
If the bakery does well, then I will take it seriously. If you put $20,000 into a bakery, would you go away and say, you go ahead. If that makes money, then I'll take it seriously. <laughs> would that business make money? No. Nope. No, you take it seriously first. You take it seriously first. Then, then the business will make money. Okay? But again, people don't think that this is a business. What I'm trying to say here, folks, is don't take it for granted. Don't think, okay, that just because you've purchased a coin, that that's it. That's, that's the most you can get out of Gold Quest, an Olympic set, or a paper coin, or a, or a dragon coin. There's a lot more. Take it seriously first, then it will prosper. The Gold Quest business must be treated like any other business, seriously, okay? It's not going to move if you don't involve yourself in it. Okay, so don't, don't, uh, don't be the type of guy that's going to be talking to people about Gold Quest and tell them, no, no, you don't have to do anything. <laughs> okay, don't be. In fact, I have, a, I have a, how do you call this, a friend who starts her presentations. Yes, I'm going to show you a business, but before I show you the business, I want to explain that there's going to be a lot of hard work, you're going to experience a lot of rejection, you're going to experience a lot of uh, disappointment, you're going to have to learn how to get over that disappointment. Sometimes it'll be depressing. How's that for a start? <laughs> then she says, would you like me to continue? Because if you're not willing to go through all of these, then let's not talk anymore. That's how she starts. That's how she starts. I know that's a bit contrary to the way some other people start, you know, with the, oh, you don't have to do anything, oh, you know. No. You let people know this is a business. You have to take it seriously. The only way you're going to make it prosper is if, you're, if you get involved. I remember my grandmother always used to tell me the best fertilizer for a farm is the farmer's feet. Some of you are looking at me like, you know, you, you have to actually walk the farm. You have to be there. You have to plow. You have to plant. You have to fertilize. The best fertilizer for a farm is a farmer's feet. If you expect this business to take off, if you expect this business, if you expect others to take you seriously, you must take the business seriously. Okay, number two, doubt is a big killer of this business. Okay? This is a faith business, like any business. When you open up a restaurant, you have faith in your recipes, you know, in your chef's ability to duplicate these recipes and, and, and you know, churn out the, the good food every day. You know what I'm saying? And finally, you have the faith, okay, that there, your food is so good that people will talk about it and refer people into your restaurant. So, you know what I'm saying? Business is a faith endeavor, okay? It's no different with Gold Quest. It's a faith business. Now, when a businessman starts his business, is he making money right away? No, he's not, right? But he has the faith that he will. Now, it's very, very important. Also here in Gold Quest, when you started, did you have 2,000 people in your organization? Did you, did you already have your weekly checks and cycle coins coming in? No, but you saw the plan. You saw the feasibility of it. You saw others succeeding in this business, and you say, I have faith that I can build this business the way so-and-so has, right? That's why we came in. And it's this same faith, it's this same conviction in the business that helps you discuss this business with other people. Doubt is a killer, okay, because it, it, it eats away at your faith. That's why when you are new in the business, Okay, or if you have somebody new in the business who's, who's in your organization, always warn them, stay away from dream stealers. There's many of them, believe me. <laughs> They're what we call dream stealers. How many of you have met these kind of people? Oh, you know what? In 10 years, if I build this business properly, then, oh, you'll never amount to anything. Oh, yeah, yeah, right. Oh, right? They're all over the place. Really, stay away from people like this. Stay away from them. 
If you're presenting the business to someone and you're a newcomer, don't get into arguments. And pass this down. The moment starts, somebody starts to argue with you, okay, then just say, I'm sorry, no offense. Okay, I just wanted, I, I was hoping that you'd be interested in a very, very good opportunity that's been working for people. But hey, if you, if you don't like it, great, let's, let's go play bowling or something. Don't get into arguments unless you will be the one doing the influencing. I have seen it happen many, many, many times. Where somebody will come in all on fire. Whoa! Cycling every day. I'm not talking about bicycling. <laughs> and then he comes and he talks to his uncle. Uncle, guess what? Da -da 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 oh man, I have friends who got burned in that industry. Oh, you, did you know that there's three companies like that that closed like, really? What? Oh, but you know, this company is different. No, it's not. They're all the same. You know, look at the directors. Look at them. Look at them. Shows them the profile. And this guy who was excited a few minutes ago walks away. You know, maybe my uncle's right. Maybe, maybe I made a mistake. <laughs> the moment you get in front of somebody like that, oh, sorry, no offense, I'd rather not talk about it, then just walk away. Stay away from people like that. Because believe you me, there will be people who will be like that. For every one person that you will find that will embrace the vision that is Gold Quest, you will find 20 others who will tell you, you're nuts. And you know why? Have you, ever, have you ever wondered why there's so many people like this? Have you ever wondered? Because it's the cowardly thing to do. It doesn't take any courage to accept where you are. And you know how you are in life. As the harsh realities of life start setting into your life, your, your dreams start, you know what I'm saying, your goals and your standards start getting lower and lower and lower. You know what I'm saying? I've been through that, I know. And I know I'm not the only one in the room tonight. And finally, they're at the point where they're so low, where the only goal you have is as long as I don't end up in debt. Right? What happened to our lofty ambitions in college and in high school? Reality sets in. There's many, many people like that. Now, it takes absolutely no courage to accept. It takes absolutely no courage to look at somebody and say, what you're doing is useless. In other words, what they're saying is, how dare you think that you can rise above everybody else when you're just one of us. That's the reason why there's so many people like that. They've just resigned themselves to the fact that, oh, this is as far as I'm going. And I might as well learn how to live with it. I might as well learn how to be happy. I might as well learn to accept my fate. That's why there's so many people like that. It takes no courage. It takes a lot of courage to do what you guys are doing. It takes a lot of courage to say, I'm sick of the system. I'm sick of financial worry. I'm sick of somebody owning my life. I'm going to do something about it. And you know why it takes a lot of courage? Because when you don't achieve it, it hurts. Doesn't it hurt when you dream for something and you don't get it? Yes. That's why it takes a lot of courage. Those people would rather not dream anymore. And that's why there's so many of them out there. Stay away from people like that. They will sap your spirit, they will sap your energy. Hang around the people that are rabid about Gold Quest. <laughs> Hang around the people that stay in the office until 4.30 doing the business. <laughs> Always remember the SW principle. Some will, some won't, so what? Someone else is waiting. I walk away from some meetings going SW to myself. Some people will come in, some people will see the vision, some people won't, so what? Don't take it personally. Go to the next guy. This guy doesn't see the vision and the opportunity. So what? Go to the next guy. But let me tell you one thing. Just the fact that you're going around getting a bunch of no's. Okay? Believe me. Once you start succeeding in the business, all these people that used to say no, when they see you 
taking your family out more often. Right? When they see you coming home earlier to your children and to be with your wives and your husbands. When they see you driving a new car, they're going to say, wait a minute. What's this guy up to? Oh yeah, I remember the business I was talking to you about. In other words, what I'm trying to say is don't be afraid of no's. Don't be afraid of people telling you no. Because as you succeed, okay, as you succeed, more and more people are going to look and say, hey, it really does work. Another principle that's not here is money is relative. The more money you have, the more relatives you have. No, no, I was just kidding. <laughs> What I'm trying to say is, but you know, I, I mean, let's face it. <laughs> There's different sets of rules for people, right? We have some wacko out in the street, you know, who's crazed and everything, and, and, and you know, he, he eats 10 million hot dogs a day with peanut butter on them. <laughs> the guy or beggar say, look at that crazy old fellow, right? But if the guy lived in IOI, which is a, a, a very nice, uh, a posh place here in uh, Malaysia. No, he's not crazy, he's eccentric. <laughs> right? You know how everything changes, but that's the way it is. Once you start to succeed, people take notice. People take notice. They say, hey, what is this? What is this guy doing? What is he doing that I'm not? That's what I'm saying. The more no's you get, the more people are going to be watching you. How many have people watching them right now? How many? If you can't raise your hand, that means you haven't talked to enough people. Really. Nobody has 100% success rate. The reason I want to point this out is that so you don't get discouraged. I always talk about the money that I made as a customer. There's some of you that, that, uh, that know. I made 15,000 US my first four weeks as a customer in this business. And I talked to two people. I mean, I brought in... I referred two people, Ferdy on my left and my cousin on my right. We'll talk about that uh, tomorrow in, in, in more detail. But I never, never talk about the 50 people that told me I was nuts. I never talk about the 50 people that told me this company would never make it. I never talk about the 50 people that told me this company would run away, etc., etc., etc. Nobody has 100% success rate. Up to this day, I don't have 100% success rate. VJ, our managing director, when he talks, still doesn't have 100% success rate. Dexter Yeager doesn't have 100% success rate. Mark Yarnell doesn't have 100% success rate. Big Al, not our own Big Al here, the one we read about, doesn't have 100% success rate. But are they successful? The reason I want to point this out is not so that you're happy that you're getting rejected. Okay, I mean, that's not the point in this whole exercise. I'm just trying to say it's part of the process. Okay, it's part of success. And it doesn't mean that because you get rejected that you will fail. It doesn't mean that. It just means you get better. Rejection is part of this business. That's what I was trying to say earlier. Instead of getting discouraged, learn from the experience. Why? Why did the person not see the business opportunity? Why did the, the person that I'm talking to, why did my friend, why did my uncle, why did my cousin not see the vision? Instead of going home, sitting down, moping about it, oh no, I'm going to throw away all my brochures, I'm never going to go into that web page again. Never going to attend another meeting again. Instead of getting discouraged, sit down, analyze. Why? What didn't I do right? Don't focus on your rejection. Focus on why. What can I do next time so that I won't be rejected? The biggest reason, however, for me why doubt okay, is such a killer is the word influence. This is an influence business, okay? I had a friend a few years back who came up to my wife and myself and, and uh, you know, during a party, 
And she noticed that our children were very, very obedient. You know, they would follow what we say. You know, we'd say do this, and they would. We'd say do that, and they would. We'd say top or go. Look at, see if your sister is okay in the back. Oh, yes, yes, my. He'd drop what he was doing, you know, and go. And a friend came up to me and said, you know, Joe, you're so lucky. I said, why? Because you still have influence over your children. And I said, what do you mean? Because my children, I don't have any influence over them anymore. They were, ah, ah, no matter what I say, I don't have any influence. And I said, you're wrong. I said, you and your wife have influence over your children, whether you're aware of it or not. You're just, you're just not looking. I mean, if you, let me think about it. If you're a parent, how many parents do we have here? Okay. Isn't it great? Isn't being a parent one of, them, one of the nicest things on this earth? Anyway, can you imagine you're a father and you go home and, I don't know, you go out and buy a hundred cases of beer a day and sit in front of the TV and drink, drink ten, ten cases of beer every day. What are you telling your child? What are you telling your son? When you go old, when you become a man, this is how you should act. Hey, ladies, stop laughing. I got something for you guys, too. <laughs> when you're at home as a wife, they're going, uh-oh. And your husband comes home after a hard day's work, and you're there, ah, da, da, why only now? You, I, I told you to go to the grocery. Nah, 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 nah. I'm not going to cook dinner for you. You go and... Nah. What? <laughs> What you're telling your daughter, hey wait, the serious side is what you're telling your daughter, right? Is when you grow up and you have a husband, this is the way you should treat him. <laughs> you have influence over your children whether you're aware of it or not. That's what I was telling my friend. It's the same thing in this business. You have an influence over your, your organization. Whether you want to admit it or not, whether... Whether you even care to think about it. If your organization looked like this, you'll always be the standard bearer of that network. Of course, if you build properly, it's not going to end there. But you will always be the apex of that network. You will always be the standard bearer. You'll always be the one that people look to. They're not going to look at your, your, your leaders. They're going to look at you. Harun's the one who, you know, referred me to this business. How's he doing? What's he doing? What's his frame of mind? When you doubt, your influence filters down. Can you imagine having your two who are so excited? Hey, guess what? You know, I'm, I'm going to. I, I, I love this business so much. I have so much freedom. I've never made so much money in my life. I think I'm going to do this full time. Then you come up to these two going, Hey, wait, 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 wait. Maybe that's not a wise thing to do. Maybe it's not a wise thing to, you know, put all your eggs in one basket. Don't, don't resign from your job. What do you think is going to happen to these two? Are they going to be, re are they going to go home, you know, like brave hearts? No, they go, hey, wait, does Joe know something we don't? Does, does he know something? Or, wait a minute, maybe, maybe you, know, you see what I'm saying? So what do you think they're going to tell their, their uh, leaders? Hey, wait, 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 we better have a meeting. I mean, you know, we should meet with Joe. There's something wrong here. Why, why? What do you mean there's something wrong? Oh, you know, you know we were thinking of doing this full time and Joe discouraged us from doing it. Oh my gosh, we better tell our leaders too. You see what I'm saying? That filters down. You influence your organization, whether you're aware of it or not. The only question, folks, is are you a positive influence or are you a negative influence? Think about your activities the last two, three months. Have you been a positive influence or have you been a negative influence? Remember I said some of the stuff I'm going to say is going to hurt a little bit. <laughs> what seeds have you sown? the last two, three, four months. <laughs> For the ones who sowed negative seeds, well, <laughs> they're probably feeling it right now. But for the ones who sowed positive seeds, I mean, we've been having some problems with a few members of the press in this country, right? 
And there have been many, many people that have been, oh, you know, the chicken littles, the sky is falling, all oh, the world is ending. But there are people in this room whose incomes have gone up. These are the people that are saying, yep. What kind of influence are you to your organization? Positive or negative? Okay. Now always remember, positive down. Anything positive, pass it down. Anything positive. Hey, I cycled. Hey, I got my first coin. Hey, did you know the company, you know, uh, just uh, became a distributor of the Royal Australian Mint? Hey, did you know that VJ and, and uh, Japadas just came from the Vatican and had an audience with the Pope? Anything positive, pass it down. Anything negative, pass it up. Go to your leader and say, hey, my check was delayed. Hey, how come there was this, this article? Hey, my, my uh, genealogy was wrong. Hey, can I, can I give, give away a big secret? The company makes mistakes. <laughs> but can you name me one that doesn't? I know organizations similar to ours that have been around for 20, 30 years and they still make mistakes. Not because they want to. But because it's, it's, it's part of it. No matter what you say, no matter how high tech you get, there is still the human factor. And let's face it, we err. If you think that by joining this organization, that there will never be a mistake made, well, you're going to be set up for disappointment. But one thing I think we can all attest to is the mistakes are getting less and less as this company gets older and older. Thank you. So always remember, let's all say it together. Positive down, negative up. Anything negative, take up to your, take up to your leader. Take it up to a director. Take it up to one of the, the staff if you, have a, if you have a representative office where you are. Number three, they don't invest time to be trained to master the business. They don't invest in time. Doesn't it make sense that in order to succeed in this business, one must study all the aspects of the business. I mean, doesn't that make perfect logical sense? I mean, a lot, I know a lot of people are saying yes, <laughs> but then I've never done anything about it. If you expect to, to make it in this business, master the business. If you want to put up a bakery, learn to bake bread. <laughs> I don't know how simple I can be. How much more simple I can get, rather. Master all the aspects of this business, because the more you know, the better off you're going to be. Learn everything you can about number one, the company, uh, the industry. What kind of industry are we in? How did this start? What year did it start? What principles does this industry espouse? Have you ever thought about that? One thing I love so much about this industry is the free enterprise that it promotes. Study, I'm telling you, the more you study this industry, some people call it MLM, some people call it direct selling, some people call it, now it's referral selling. But whatever you want to call it, this industry has changed a lot of people's lives. Study it. The more you study it, the more excited you get. The more I study the industry, the more excited. You know why? Because I know I'm at the forefront. This kind of business everybody is getting involved in. <laughs> MasterCard, uh, Visa Card, they now have the, the member get member uh, programs, which is basically, hey, I'm referring you to MasterCard because they're a good company. It's the oldest business in the book. You go to a restaurant, you like the, you, you like the food, you refer your friends. They go there, they like the food, they bring in their friends. You watch a movie, you like it, you refer it to your friends. Have you ever referred a movie to someone who, that you didn't like? I mean, the, you didn't like the movie and you referred the, it to someone? <laughs> this industry is fascinating. There's books you can read about it. 
hang around people that have been in the industry a long time. I used to spend a lot of time as a neophyte, neophyte in this business, hanging around with leaders, just sitting down, milking them for information. Learn everything you can about the company that you're doing business with. How did it start? Why did it start? Who were the founders? Why in Hong Kong? Why the plan that they have? Why not the traditional plan? Find out. How did they get to be uh, distributors of the Royal Australian Mint? I mean, official brokers of the Mint. I mean, there's only, what, 27, I think, or 20, 26, 23. See how well I know this company? <laughs> know everything you can about the, the business. Know everything you can about the plan. What are the strongest points of this plan? What are the weak points? Have you found any? <laughs> I haven't. I still think it's one of the best plans on the planet that works. <laughs> and I must emphasize those two words. I know many, many plans that are really fantastic, but you know, two months later, there's no company to look at. <laughs> Talking about a plan that works. Know everything you can about the plan. When we first start, when we first dream, uh, when we first opened in, in, in this wonderful country, I had so many people coming up, oh, binary is illegal. Oh, binary is this. <laughs> Over the last three, four months, I think there have been about 15 to 20 companies that have opened up. Not just here, but probably another 100 all over the globe. What plan did they use? <laughs> Why? Because it's powerful. It's powerful. It's duplicable. It's profitable. Both for the company and the customer. So find out more. Find out everything you can. The more you know, the better you can represent your business. The more you know, the better you can defend the business. Have you ever had to defend your business? Doesn't knowledge help? The more you know, the more confident you are. There are many, many people that won't do the business simply because they're not confident. Hey, leaders, if you have people like this under you, they're calling. <laughs> Make them confident. Sit down with them. Train them. Help them learn more. The more they know, the more confident they're going to be. It's the same with you. The more you know about the business, the industry, the plan, the more confident you're going to be. Have you ever met these people? They're really, really shy. They never say anything. They don't talk. But you talk about computers with them and they can talk for five days. <laughs> Have you ever met people? I mean, or, or crocheting or golf or I mean, whatever it is that they're confident in. The only reason people are shy is they're not confident to talk. The more you know, the more confident you are. The key to sustain growth in your organization is training your leaders. How can you train your leaders if you yourself are not trained? <laughs> Again, logic. You know, this business is all logic. How can you train others if you don't know how? Training build con builds confidence in yourself. When you're confident with yourself, then you're also confident to train others. Training builds confidence in your leaders. How many here are in Ranjit's organization? Do you have confidence in your leader? Yes! That was Ranjit who said that. No, 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 I was just kidding. Why? Because you know he knows every aspect of this business. You know that he stays up two, three, four, five hours every night studying. You see what I'm saying? Now, how are you with your people? Now, I'm not just singling out Aranjit. There's Tony, there's Ronnie, there's uh, Isa. I mean, all of these guys. The reason that they're leaders is because their people have confidence in them. Now, are these guys idiots? I mean, about the business. No, they know everything about the business. 
Do not deprive yourself of the privilege and fulfillment of impartation. This is a business of impartation. And I'm telling you, it is extremely, extremely fulfilling. One of the things I love so much about this industry, I've been in for 10 years. I've been with GoldQuest for two as, as V-Team. And I'm telling you, even the eight years, the one thing that I loved about it, aside from the income that I get, of course, is the fact that the people that I have around me, the people in my organization, both up and down, have changed as people. Have you not changed because of this business? Yes. Have you not become a better person? Have you not become stronger, more resilient? Yes. Yes. Don't deprive yourself of that. Because I'm telling you, it's, just, it's so fulfilling to be able to impact somebody's life. It's so fulfilling to be able to sit with someone who, who otherwise would have given up in life, at least in the financial aspect. Up to now, I still get a big kick out of this. I still get a big kick about coming into a meeting, whether one-on-one -on -one or, or, or a big meeting, to present the business. And you know the look that some people have? You know this countenance? You know these people that have given up in life? Remember the dream stealers I was talking about? They have a certain countenance. You know I'm saying? They may still be like, but they have a certain countenance in their spirit. And, and, and you can see it. You can identify it. And I get such fulfillment out of presenting the business to someone and see literally before your eyes, his eyes waking up. Has that ever happened to you? Isn't it, isn't, isn't it great? That's what I mean. To impact somebody's life. To sit down with somebody who's discouraged about the business and tell him, bro, it's, you know, it's because you're doing this wrong, you're doing this wrong. You know, if you just did this, look, this is what happened in my... Sit down, train the person. And you'll see that person wakes up. That's what I mean. Don't deprive yourself of that experience. Impartation is one of the nicest things about this business. So take training seriously. First, you train for you. Then later on you will be training because you will be training somebody else. You, I mean, don't think that just because you go to this training seminar this weekend that you're all going to be experts. <laughs> it's going to take a little time. That's why with these uh, VCDs or VHS or whatever it is, whatever format you purchase. Another reason why people fail in this business is they think this is a get-rich-quick scheme. They think they come in and the next day they're wealthy. And I hate that. Because that's not what this business is. Now, if you're a farmer and you wanted to plant a kernel of corn, you start with one kernel, right? Then you plant it. Now when you plant that kernel, do you sit there the next day and... No. You must first plant it properly in fertile soil, aerate, rotate the soil. Then you have to water and fertilize the plant. Then you have to take out the weeds around the plant. In other words, there's a lot of work that goes into it. And finally, when the plant gets about this high, does that mean now that it's, you know, that it's time to stop? No. Why? Because you have investment in that plant already. And it can still die. After some more rotavating and some more fertilizing, now there's more birds to scare away. However, after all of that, when the plant matures, what happens? From that one little kernel, after all that work, after all that effort, comes thousands. If you want to succeed in this business, think like a farmer. That's the only way you're going to succeed in this business. Don't think sales. Don't think volume. Think like a farmer. People fail in this business because they only want the fruits of the harvest, but they are not willing to go through the effort of actually plowing the fields, planting the seeds, fertilizing the soil, watering the sprouts, taking out the weeds, chasing away the pests, and going through the daily process of getting your hands dirty with soil. All they want are the benefits. Hey, wake up. That's not what this business is about. And I, and I really don't think that you should promote it that way. 
If you know somebody in your organization who goes around, you know, presenting the business in that way, hey, come on, you know, just purchase a coin, you don't have to do anything. Oh, and you're going to cycle every day within two weeks. If you want to have a large organization and the financial benefits, large weekly checks, then you must be willing to pay the price. You must be willing to miss out on a few parties, a few movies, a few golf games, or whatever it is you do for recreation for a few months. How many here have sacrificed? You glad you made that sacrifice? Yes. You know, when I'd give my testimony before, you know, in, in groups about, about uh, how do you call this, you know, the success that I achieved and everything, or that, that I came to, people go, oh, Joe, you're so lucky you made this kind of money. I'm like, what do you mean lucky? <laughs> Man, I spent 10, 11, 12, 13 hour days building this business. But then you reap the benefits of it, right? You must be willing to get yourself trained so that you can train others. Because that's part of the process. That's what separates us from get-rich-quick schemes. You must be willing to spend a lot of time in training others so they can be leaders in their own right. There is a cost. There is a price to be paid to be successful in this business. You have to be willing to count it. You have to count the cost. This is a nurturing business. Nurture people, make them into leaders. That takes time. That whole process takes time. That's why this is not get rich quick. I know some people in this business that have made a lot of money the first month, the first two months. But then three, four, five months later, no more. In fact, no more in the business. <laughs> On the other hand, I know people that didn't earn money their first week, their second week, their third week. But then they qualified for their coin. Two weeks later, they get their first check. Two weeks later, they get another check, a little bit bigger. One week later, they get, you know what I'm saying? These are the guys that I enjoy watching. Because these guys do it right. They don't, think, they don't think volume. They don't think sales. They think training. They think nurturing. That process takes time. This is a get rich sure, not get rich quick scheme. There is a world of difference between the two. Okay, learn how to point it out, even in your presentation. That's why I like uh, that lady's presentation so much. Because right away, she comes right out and says, this is a lot of hard work, this is a lot of painful uh, experience that you have to go through, rejection, disappointment. Are you willing to go through that? Because if you're not, then I'd rather not talk. I'd rather not present the business to you. That's why her leader asked. Number five, another reason why a lot of people fail. They have no focus. Have you ever met people like that? Yeah. <laughs> focus is something that you need to succeed in any business, not just Gold Quest. Gold Quest. All successful people are focused. All, bar none. Can you imagine having a musically gifted child and you tell him to study violin. Then while he's taking up violin, take up harp. And also while he's taking up harp, take up piano. And then also on the, uh, on the weekends, take up drums. And then since he's really good, have him take up guitar. And then also have him take up the trumpet because it sounds really nice. And then you also have him take saxophone because he can play like Kenny G. And then you also have him play trombone because you like that that the trombone brings. And then you like the cello because of the soulful tones. And then on the side, as a hobby, you tell him to take up harmonica. <laughs> now, I want to ask you guys one question. Will this child ever grow up to be a world-class musician? Why not? <laughs> no focus. Many people are like that child. Really. I may be stepping on a few toes, but there are many people out there that are like that. They join every company, every business, every new venture on the net. And they go around propagating it. Oh, man. You look at their, their cards, they have names of every company. They're into real estate, they're into jewelry, they're into this and that, soaps, health products, slimming products, fattening products, you know, grow hair products, less hair products. I mean, you name it, they're involved. 
And then for the life of them, they cannot figure out why they cannot build their business. If you expect to succeed, focus. You have to learn to focus. The number one rule of warfare Levi Strauss made a fortune making jeans. Made jeans for, and it's a fascinating story. Manoletta uh, spent a lot of time telling me about, uh, I thought I knew how Levi, you know, the jean company uh, got started. And, and man, it's fascinating. But they made jeans. Yes, now they make shirts and, 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 and belts. But after what, 120, 130 years of jeans focused. The, they don't know how to make much, but they know how to make jeans. Kodak makes only film products. And they're doing pretty well, the last I heard. Tiger, Tiger Woods is worth approximately 200 million US dollars. <laughs> He's been playing golf for three and a half years. Just focusing on golf. <laughs> I mean, I don't know how else I can point this out to you. Now, I'm not going to sit here and tell you that you have to focus on Gold Quest. That's not a decision for me to make. I'm not hearing, here telling you that Gold Quest is the only place in the world where you can make money. There are many, many other places where you can make money. Yes, no. Right? So I'm not telling you to focus on Gold Quest. That's your decision. It's up to you to decide. You want to be a real estate millionaire? Focus on real estate. You want to be a Gold Quest millionaire? Focus on Gold Quest. You want to be a millionaire in the automobile industry? Focus on automobiles. Decide what it is you want to do and focus in on it. That's the only way you're going to be successful. Don't become a master of all trades, uh, a jack of all trades and a master of nothing. Number six, they do not know how to present the business. If you expect to succeed, learn how to present. If you don't know how to present the business properly, people won't take you seriously. Big earners in this industry know how to present the business. All. Bar none. The business. Can you imagine going up to someone, oh, you, know, you should see this business. Oh, man, it's fantastic. You just buy a coin, you know, and you can partake. Oh, can you tell me about it? Well, you know, I, I don't know too much about it. Hey, can you come to a meeting? <laughs> if that's the way you expect to make your business grow, in the beginning, yes when you don't know. But I mean, don't be this way six months after joining. <laughs> if you only invite your prospective customer to a meeting, instead of sitting down and presenting the business on your own, two things are going to happen. Number one, they'll think that the business can't be that good. You know why? Because if the business were good, then you'd be able to present it to me. If you don't know how to present it to them, they'll think you're playing a numbers game by just inviting as many, many people to a meeting and, and, and hoping that a few will sign up, right? On the other hand, if somebody takes the time to sit down and present the business to you, and he knows all the aspects about the business, he, can, he answers all your questions, what do you say? Whoa, this guy got hit really bad. By the, I mean, you know, I mean, he really, really wants to do this business. He's really serious about this business. All of that happens in somebody's mind when you do or don't present the business to them. That's how important it is. If you know how to present, you can bring the business anywhere. You can expand your business at your own rate. There are uh, business uh, meetings and business previews in hotels, okay, there are some leaders that have it at the offices. And I'm not trying to say don't learn from it, don't uh, use it to help your business grow, but don't let that be your only source. 
Learn how to sit down and make a presentation to someone. Show them how serious you are. Know your plan. Know the company. Show how well you've been doing, how well other people around you have been doing. Imagine you have 5,000 people in your customer base. Some people are like, ah. <laughs> how many would like that, having 5,000 people? All right. <laughs> now imagine that you're the only one who knows how to present the business. <laughs> It'll be really tiring. You're going to get sore throat and laryngitis. You know what I'm saying? I mean, everything. That means you have to physically put yourself in front of 5,000 people. Now, if you know how to present the business, now you can teach two, three, four, five people how to present, right? Then the five people with you can teach 10 others how to present. Then the 10 others can teach 20 others how to present. Let's stop talking about big numbers. Can you imagine having 200 on your left and 200 on your right? And they all know how to present the business plan. <laughs> now how can you possibly teach them to present if you yourself don't know how? Logically. You have to know. See, being able to present the business to someone is just one, one of the reasons why you should learn how to present the business. The most important reason for me is so that you can teach. So that you can teach someone how to present. Because you teach this group how to present, then they go out now and teach their group and their group. And that's what causes growth. Remember, nurture and teach your people. One of the first skills you should teach is how to make a presentation. We'll take it up in the other modules, how you can you know, effectively teach your, your leaders in your organization how to make a presentation. Another reason why people don't succeed in this business, they don't look at the future. They only see today. People who fail only see today. If you want to be successful in anything, in anything that you do, learn how to look at the future. Focus on what your organization will look like six months from now. Can you imagine what your organization will look like six months from now? Will it look the same as it looked today? You know, because I, I hear it all the time from so many people. You yeah, Joe, having, you know, 20,000 on the left and 20,000. I can't even qualify for my coin. I have two on my left and three on my right. <laughs> yeah, that's today. Right? That's today. But what about two months from now? What about six months from now? What about a year from now? Can you imagine what you look, what we, what, not what you'd look like, what your organization would look like? I know what you'd look like. <laughs> Laughing all the way to the bank. Can you imagine what your organization looked like two years from now? I remember when I was a coster, up, up to this day, don't you want to sleep and then wake up and it's already the year 2003? Can you imagine what your organization would look like? That's what it takes to succeed. Don't just look at today. Yes, deal with the problems of today. Yes, you know, focus in on what you have to do to, to make your today into on tomorrow. But keep it in mind. Your financial future in this business will be determined by what you do or do not do over the next few months. Your future is staring you in the face. We've sat here and imagined what our network's going to look like in two years. We all, can you imagine what your network or what your organization will look like two years from now if you did this business eight hours a day, diligently, every day? What will your organization look like? Do you think you'd have some growth? What about four years from now? Can you imagine if... If every day, eight, nine, ten hours a day, you spend training your leaders, sitting down, making sure they have all the training material, these VCDs, you sit down, have your meetings with them. Can you imagine doing this every day? 
<laughs> for two years? Hey, let me, let me, let me face you with some uh, reality. Five years from today is going to happen whether we plan for it today or not. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You may be sitting back there, oh yeah, Joe, Joe's talking about four years, Joe's talking about five years. I just, I just worried about today. I just want to get my bills paid today. Well, yes, like I said, deal with the problems that today brings. But also sit here and realize that five years will come whether you plan for it today or not. That's what I'm saying. Your future is staring in the face. What are you going to do about it? What are you going to do about it? We all agree that if we do this eight hours a day, that it's going to prosper, right? Yes. Somebody doing this business eight hours a day for two years, how much would they be earning? Come on, I want to hear some answers. One million US dollars. Is that weekly or monthly? <laughs> Who cares? It's a lot. <laughs> well, there you go. Some people say one, one million a month is too, is, too, is too much. Some people say it's too little. 200,000 US a month. That doesn't sound too bad. 100,000 US a month. That still doesn't sound too bad. Some people in the back going, God, if I just get $400 a week, I'll be happy. <laughs> <laughs> well, again, it depends. What are you doing about it today? You want to succeed, look at the future. People who fail have no vision. And we specifically do not put here people who fail in GKI. People who fail, period, have no vision. All success starts with a vision. All. Everything starts as a vision. Without a vision, people perish. Vision is what gets people going. Vision is what keeps people alive. I read this story once uh, about this guy who went and talked to three bricklayers. Okay, mm -hmm. bricklayers, the guys who lay bricks. And the story when I was reading, it says this guy interviewed him and he talked to bricklayer uh, A and, and he says, I'm, what are you doing? And the guy said, well, I'm just here, I'm laying bricks. In other words, that's what my boss told me to do today. Then he went to bricklayer number two and bricklayer number two said, well, I'm just earning a living. I just want to make some bucks for my family. I just want to bring home the bacon. Tomorrow it can be ditch digging. Tomorrow it can, the next day it can be a, a, a hammering nail. I don't care. I'm just earning a living. Then he went to the third guy, and the third guy, you know, just didn't want to look at him. said, I'm building a cathedral. Go away. And then the story ended there. But I started reflecting, doing some introspecting on what kind of mentality did these people have? Can you imagine these A and B, the ones who are just making a living? Do you think they care what the, what the, what the building is going to look like two months from now? They don't care. They don't care if the bricks are, you know, crooked. They don't care if the mortar mix is too, uh, is too watery or too thick. They don't care. Because tomorrow they could be pounding nails. Tomorrow he could be digging a ditch. He doesn't care. But this guy building the cathedral, man, this guy gets out, you know, he has that, what do you call that? plumb line or whatever. You know, so that make sure he lays the brick straight. He makes sure that the, co the consistency of his mortar is just right so that when it hardens, you know, the bricks set properly, etc., etc. These two guys over here are sitting there, wow, wow, wow. You know, it's, it's, it's almost five. You know, we, it sounds like we've been here for two weeks. Oh, I, I wish the clock, the bell would ring so that we could go home. <laughs> are there people like that? <laughs> Then this guy, on the other hand, saying, oh my gosh, it's already 5 o'clock. I didn't realize it was already 5. These two guys, when it hits 5 o'clock, they drop their tools, they, drive, they go out and, I don't know, wherever bricklayers go after 5 o'clock. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? This guy, on the other hand, says, wow, it's already 5 o'clock. Anyway, it's traffic, so might as well stay another one or two hours. Anyway, I'm not tired yet. You remember a time in your life when you had a vision for something? Weren't you willing to go the extra mile? They're all doing the same thing. They're just laying bricks. But are they doing the same thing? No, they're not. 
When these guys leave and pack up and like I said, go where, I don't know, bricklayers go after 5 o'clock, do they look back? No, they don't care. In fact, they wish they weren't there again the next day. They wish they were hammering nails tomorrow. But this guy, when he finally quits at 7.30, 8 o'clock, because it's too dark already, he can't see anything, does he just walk up and uh, pack up and, and, and walk away? No, he, you know, he, he admires his, his uh, handiwork. Wow, you know, today it started here, now it's here. You know, in two weeks we'll be building the dome. They're doing the same thing. They're just laying bricks. The next day, these two guys, oh man, another day, oh God, oh, what is that? Oh, oh. <laughs> but this guy over here, he wakes up, wow, today we're putting in the dome. Gotta get a good breakfast because I need my strength. He goes there, makes sure all his tools are in place. You know what I'm saying? Make sure he rests properly. Because today they're putting in the dome. They're all doing the same thing. But that's what a vision does for you. It changes. It changes what you do on a daily basis. See, I'm not here just earning a living for today. I'm not here just to build an organization. As far as I'm concerned, I'm building a cathedral. A cathedral that will feed my family for the next 5, 10, 15 years. When you have a vision like that, you don't take things lightly. You're willing to pay the price. You're willing to count the cost. That's what a vision does for you. If you don't have a vision, how are you going to accomplish something? Many, many people never hit the target in life simply because they don't know where the target is. If you want to succeed in anything, first sit down and determine what's my target? Where am I aimed? What, what am I trying to hit? You must have a vision. If you don't, nothing's going to happen. Everything starts with a vision. Everything. The Petronas Tower started as a vision in the architect's mind. You know what I'm saying? That movie, Aaron Brockovich or whatever, the, I don't know, Gladiator, started in somebody's mind. The Mercedes Benz that we all love today started in somebody's mind tinkering in his garage. You know what I'm saying? Everything starts as a vision. Don't take it lightly. And I, say, and I emphasize, don't take it lightly because it's such an overused word. Every seminar you go to vision, vision for the millennium, 2,000 vision with leaders or whatever. I mean, it's so overused. Go home, think about it. Introspect. Do I have a vision? Do I know? If I'm an arrow, do I know what target I'm trying to hit? Because your vision will be your leader. That's what's going to motivate you. That's what's going to, you know. They were saying that... Uh, some directors stayed up till 4.30 last night <laughs> working on some of the technical aspects and, and others with me, who I'd like to thank, by the way. <laughs> you know why? Because we have a vision for what we're doing. We're willing to pay the price. If you don't have a vision, nothing's going to happen. Many, many people fail because they have no vision. And you know what, as a bonus, when you have a vision, people follow, right? All the great leaders in the, in, in the past, why were they followed? Because they were visionaries. Haven't you ever heard that word before, visionaries? Now, like I said earlier, these probably aren't the only eight reasons why people fail. There will probably be more, but, but they'll probably be linked up to the eight. As long as you make sure that you avoid doing these eight pitfalls, you stand a greater probability that you will make it in this business. Now, I want to stress at this point before I close, these are pitfalls. These are eight reasons why people fail. 
Okay, don't do them. Do the exact opposite. Okay, I just want to make that clear. Because somebody told me, Joe, why are you focusing on negative? No, I just want you to know what to avoid. Take the business seriously. Don't doubt. Keep your faith levels high. Train. Train yourself more, more, more. You can never get enough training. Believe me, the day you feel that you don't need any more training, you're dead as a leader. Learn how to present the business. Learn how to focus. Learn how to have a vision. Learn how to determine what this business really is. It's not a get-rich-quick scheme. It's a business for the future. Do the exact opposite of this aid. And you will have a greater chance of making it in this business. Thank you very much.